Hi, everybody. Welcome to Paul's Chocolate and Cherry Loaf. Wow. My Uncle Al has been, you know, he was experimenting with this loaf and he wanted to bring it to our Easter dinner, which was Sunday. We we're, this is the day before. And I wanted to film it because I found it to be a very unique bread. Okay, so here's my Uncle Al. He's cutting up some white chocolate. Now, the recipe does call for chocolate chips. However, you know, this kind of chocolate is a little bit better. We can't afford it, so we decided to go for good quality block type of chocolate and chop it up. So this is 100 grams of white chocolate. Very delicious. <laughs> Yummy, good stuff. And the recipe also calls for 100 grams of dark chocolate chips. So we use some yummy dark chocolates. I think it's Linden, it's very delicious. We have 100, gra 100 grams of that. Oh, there's a piece of chocolate right there. Mmm, chocolate in the morning. What about that? missed it got it <laughs> nothing like chocolate in the morning I'll say again so here it is uh, we're going to get this uh, chocolate and just put it together with the white chocolate and set it aside here are some yummy cherries gosh we're just draining them we had them draining overnight but we're just going to keep them in a colander type of deal, just to drain them a little further. These are the ones that we used. <laughs> hey, I'll take that cherry. Thank you very much. Now I'm showing the brands that we're using because I want you to know what we used. This is not a commercial, okay? Here we're just proofing the yeast. A third of a cup of olive oil. This is the yeast that we used. And now we're assembling the flour, putting it together. It's about 500 grams of flour. Time to make the dough. Oh yeah. Two teaspoons of salt. And now we're going to add the proofed yeast. We're gonna just, you know, clean out the jar with the remaining water. And we'll put the rest of the water in the mixture. The olive oil, of course. And we're gonna knead it slightly. We're gonna get it all together because we have to form the dough before we put the cherries and the chocolate in it. We also reserved a little bit of flour because during the mixing process and during the kneading process at the end, we want to be able to have that flexibility to add flour to it if it's a little too gooey. As you can see, that's the texture that we left it at before we put it into the mixer. And now it's time to assemble the rest of the ingredients. Here are the cherries. gonna mix it up a little don't get scared it's gonna look ugly and it looks like it's not going to come together but I promise you it will I mean I have proof just keep watching the video <laughs> we're adding the chocolate and every once in a while you'll see Al throwing in just a little bit of flour and I think that it helps to combine all the ingredients I'm not sure exactly, but it felt good. As you can see, it comes together, right? Just uh, be patient and, you know, scrape down the sides, scrape the hook, and keep going at it. As you can see there, we added a little flour. Taking it out of the mixer, we realize that it's a little wet, right? As you can see here. So we're going to add flour little by little until the text till it becomes the texture that we want. 
right? We want it soft, but we don't want it gooey, right? There it is. That's how it looks like. Ooh. Cherry and chocolate goodness. Unfortunately, it's going to be a couple hours yet, so we're going to leave it in the bowl, cover it with saran wrap, and it should rise for about, they say an hour, but I think we had it in for about an hour and a half, two hours. Putting it in the oven, it's off, and the bulb will create enough heat for it to rise properly. Here's about two hours later. Yummy. Already looks good. <laughs> we're gonna flower the bench here. And we're going to form the loaf. All right. See, it's a little moist still. It's very nice. We're going to even it out, make sure that it's flat and even as possible. And we're going to cut it into two pieces. Then we're going to make like, uh, like shoestrings or we're going to roll it so it's kind of round, right? You don't have to be too fancy pants about it. We have a diagram. You know, we do have Google like everybody else. <laughs> So here's the diagram. Look at the end loaf there, right? Now look at our end loaf. I think Al tried, but <laughs> it was kind of a lot of fun. But really, don't worry if you can't figure it out because clearly we didn't and the loaf turned out delicious anyway. <laughs> there it is, that's our rendition. Oh well, it doesn't matter how it looks really. It looks like wet rags. But honestly, this thing came out great. So using that same saran wrap so we don't, you know, we don't waste too much stuff. We're gonna cover it and we're gonna let this proof now for about another hour or so. And look at the goodness. I'll do a little flyby. Oh my gosh. We're going to preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to cook that for 20 minutes at that temperature and then we're going to lower the temperature to 375 and cook it for another 20-25 minutes, something like that. There we go. The magic of television, it's done. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? I believe the cherry and the sugar in the cherry give it this wonderful color. So Al, um, how did you discover, how did you find this wonderful loaf of bread? My wife and I, we watched the BBC uh, baking shows for the last several years. Yeah. And there's this guy, Paul Hollywood, I think. He's, an, he's a British guy. And uh, he also, he, he also um, has his own uh, master class program on BBC. And one of them is showing how to make this uh, cherry chocolate bread, okay? And it, it's usually something they do at Christmas time. So both my wife and I like cherries, we like chocolate, we like bread, we say, let's try it. And it seemed like very cool the way he was showing it. it was, you know, I, I was inspired to bake. So we did it, my wife and I. And when it was cool enough to eat, which was probably 9 o'clock p.m., you know, Debbie cut a slice and she starts eating it. She goes, oh my God, this is fantastic. <laughs> and right, and yeah. so I went and had a slice and my God, this is fantastic. Initially when I started eating it, um, it was just sort of like a, a, you know, a midnight snack kind of thing. You know, you crave for something sweet or you crave for a piece of toast with butter, whatever. And, and uh, but when you have it, it it's so good. It's, it's actually not a dessert and it's not a real bread either. It's like, it's almost like a, a chocolate sandwich with calabrese bread in a way. My Uncle Alphonse is a pretty cool guy, right? Look at that seafood. Oh my gosh. By the way, guys, we're at Easter dinner right now because this is where the bread was going to be debuted, right? And that is also my uncle's dish. We call that sufrito, which means like, you know, fried, I suppose, but it's all fried seafood. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, and these are blanched fennel that are in like an egg batter that you fry later. Oh my God, they're so wonderful. Now here's the great reveal. My family was so excited to see it. Look at that bread. Look at that loaf, delicious. Honestly, I didn't know what to eat it with. I mean, is it a dessert? Is it something that you eat with something savory? And um, I'll have to say that it's both. I mean, you imagine toasting this and putting some butter on it? I mean, wow. I ate it with some 10-year cheddar that day and it just blew my head off. Really, it's not what you think. And I would recommend this loaf to anyone. I mean, if you're a person that likes to make these kind of things and do these kind of things, do it, try it, eat it. You'll love it. <laughs> And thank you, Paul, for creating such a marvelous creation. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for being with me. I really had a great time putting this bread and the video, and this whole experience has been wonderful. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.